Welcome. We're going to cover here today introduction paragraphs. These are specifically the paragraphs that would be used in essays. What we're covering are what are paragraphs and what is paragraphing, the different types of paragraphs, again those are specific to essays, and we're going to take an in-depth look at introduction paragraphs and specifically how those are structured. In terms of background information, certainly you have read and written quite a bit in terms of essays and other kinds of writing throughout your years as a student, so paragraphs should be pretty familiar to you already. You may need some more specific information to improve your own writing. So what are paragraphs? Paragraphs are the building blocks of writing, especially looking at essays, stories, reports, summaries, and news stories. There are lots of other writing styles that also use paragraphs, but these are some that we will look at. And what is paragraphing? Paragraphing is the activity, it's how a writer will use structure, formulate, edit, and perfect paragraphs. So it's not necessarily something that a writer will do once, it's a process that they'll do over time. So why is this important? Why is it important to paragraph? You want to make sure that you're maintaining organization, that you're communicating clearly, and that you're helping your reader to understand the ideas that you're trying to get across. Keep in mind that writing is communication, so we want it to be as clear as possible. So what are the different types of paragraphs? Well, when we're looking specifically at essays, we're going to look at three types, introduction, body, and conclusion. And here today we're going to look specifically at introduction paragraphs. There are four different types of sentences that will go into an introduction paragraph. You're going to look at hook statements, that's how introduction paragraphs start off very well, then a thesis, general support statements, and conclusion statement. Let's take a look at a paragraph here, we'll take a look at an example. Vampires, zombies, and spirits. The undead have taken over popular culture and everyone loves it. Even though the supernatural creatures from fiction once terrified, today they enamor and entertain. First, modern vampires are portrayed as cool, attractive leaders. As well, zombies, once the fodder of nightmares and terror, are today the ubiquitous imagery of fashion and imagery. Finally, Centuries ago, spirits were the impetus behind desperate measures of protection, but today have taken over TV, magazines, and the internet. Overall, the supernatural are here to stay, at least in popular culture they are. So we can see in this introduction paragraph, this would work out pretty well for starting off an essay that's going to be about vampires, zombies, and spirits, and particularly how those are a part of popular culture. Now we can see that we're using different types of sentences within this particular paragraph here. Started off with a hook, we've gone to a thesis, after that we have support, and then finally a conclusion. Now let's take a look at hook statements. There are a couple of different ways that you can structure your hook statements, and the purpose here is that you want to start off really strong and catch your reader's attention. A couple of different ways of doing this are to use a rhetorical question, that's one that you do not intend to be answered, an interesting or shocking statistic, something that's really going to grab people's attention and make them stop and think, an anecdotal story, these work best when they're very short, a couple of sentences at the most, or a famous quotation. Those work out very well, particularly if they're very specific to your thesis that you're using. This is what the kind of thing that you would include in your hook statement. Then we go on to the thesis statement. This is absolutely the most important part of the introduction paragraph and arguably the most important part of your entire essay. The thesis is an arguable statement that you will attempt to prove in the writing. Everything in the essay is there for the thesis. It's all there to support the thesis. That's very important. Following the thesis, you're going to be looking at three to seven of these general support statements. These are very broad statements that state facts to support the thesis. So again, they're there for the purpose of the thesis. They're there to support it. 
they are there to prove that the thesis is true. So everything that's in your general support statements needs to be true. That's how they can be strongest. You'll finish any, every paragraph, including an introduction paragraph with a conclusion statement. This is a statement that wraps up the paragraph. It will focus the content back on the thesis and transition into the next paragraph. That's where you want to be focused there with your conclusion. Let's take a look at the example that we read earlier and let's take a look at how this one's a little bit different. Now all of the sentences and all of the wording are the same, but what we've done here is we've color coded them so that they look a little bit different and so you can see the different kinds of sentences that are included here. Notice in the red up at the top there, that's our hook statement, okay? Followed by the blue, that's our thesis statement. That's what would be proven in the entire paper. So that's our most important sentence. Following that, we've got three sentences there that are all supporting that thesis. They're all showing how the thesis is true. And we follow at the end there with the pink. That's our conclusion sentence. So again, it's the exact same example, just highlighting the different parts of that example. Strong introductions are extremely important in writing. Um, you're going to use these particularly in any kind of media or advertisement writing. Questions that students sometimes have about introductions. Is it really important to organize? Absolutely. Poor organization shows itself immediately and can frequently turn a reader off from the writing, making a reader put down the writing and go do something else. Which hooks work the best? It really depends on the information that you have available to you. Sometimes if you have a particularly good quote, that will be the best thing to use for a particular paper. Sometimes if you have a particularly shocking statistic, something that really stands out and grabs someone's attention, that's what you would want to use. It really depends on the information you have available. And finally, do professional writers use introductions? Absolutely. Take a look at articles, journals, anything that's out there and you will find that professional writers do use introductions. So what are students expected to do? Always use good organization in your writing. Make sure that you're using strong introductions and write with depth, breadth, and detail. You want lots of strong information, make strong writing. What you should know and be able to do at this point is to understand what paragraphs are, know how to paragraph, understand the different paragraph types, and know how to structure a strong introduction paragraph. I hope this has been helpful to your writing. Good luck.